Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the live streaming of the Shenandoah Congregation Sunday morning service. And I appreciate that each of you have chosen to spend time with us and to have this hour to celebrate together, to be, worship together, and to be ministered to together. This morning, uh, Shirley Gaither will be our presider and Jim Burdick will be our speaker 
And before I turn it over to Shirley, there are a few announcements that I do want to go through. As a reminder, if you would like to join our Sunday, uh, Sunday school classes before the Sunday morning service, uh, just use the same link or means by which you attach to this service right now, uh, but just do it at 945 on Sunday morning. We have two adult classes. We have a, a theology class and we have a Bible study class for adults. We also have junior senior high class and primary class, as well as if you just want to join in and chat, uh, we have a classroom dedicated to that and a classroom dedica dedicated to prayer needs. This Wednesday, we'll be having a congregational town hall meeting at 7 p.m. So we had one last month and uh, we'll have one again this coming Wednesday. This is an opportunity for you to hear updates related to the preparations for the time whenever that might be that we are able to begin physical gatherings at the church building again. Uh, other topics such as uh, the results of the survey that just recently went out uh, regarding uh, potential activities that we might do and plannings related to those, uh, we'll discuss those. And this is also a chance for you to ask questions, receive answers, uh, etc. So uh, encourage everyone, invite everyone to join our Congregational Town Hall meeting on Wednesday, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Each week, prayer concerns and grateful news are to be emailed or called into Carol White by the end of day Thursday uh, in order for them to be brought forward to the congregation on Sunday morning during this time. We do have a few things with great, within grateful news to share with you. A couple of them are updates related to last week's prayer concerns that were raised. So Diane was raised last week regarding upcoming prayer, uh, or upcoming uh, medical tests and uh, just wanted to share with you that good news was received on those medical tests. Also Earl G was raised last week because he had tested positive for uh, COVID-19 and received word from him that he is feeling almost back to normal uh, but re recovering very well, he has a lingering cough but that's uh, it at this point. And also then, uh, Kim Klaus is now going to be working full-time in real estate, and we congratulate her on that milestone. For prayer concerns this week, I uh, also wanted to let you know that within prayer concerns, uh, we try to refrain from sharing full names since we're streaming these services, and at times we're going to be sharing information that might be deemed sensitive. And so we usually just list the first name. However, in instances in which we want to avoid confusion because the first name of the person being shared is the same as a first name of a congregational member, uh, at times we'll share that person's last initial as well. And so you'll hear that sometimes I'll just say the first name and other times I'll say the first name and a last initial in order to avoid confusion. This week in prayer concerns, we'll be raising up Tyler who has employment concerns. We'll also be raising up Barbara and Gwen. Each uh, will be, are going through cancer treatments right now. We raise up Francisca, who is recovering from a stroke. We continue to raise up Sergio A, who is in ICU at this time battling COVID-19. And we also will raise up Patrick J, who is in critical, critical condition from a car accident. At this time, Carol White will be offering the prayer on behalf of the congregation for those prayer concerns that have been raised. So uh, Carol, if you would go ahead and unmute your line, and uh, I would ask the congregation at this time to bow your head. Heavenly parent, we are so grateful for the love you have for us and grateful you sent Jesus to show us how to love and be loved. We lift in prayer the names of Barbara, Tyler, Gwen, Patrick J, Francisca, Sergio A. You know their names. You know their needs. 
we write their names in our bulletin and say their names out loud so we will remember them this week in our personal prayers. Their problems are not unlike those of thousands of people in our country today who are sick or unemployed or both. We can't possibly wrap our hearts and minds around the needs of thousands, but we know you can. We pray the power of the Holy Spirit bless everyone in this time of global need. Almighty God, we are grateful that we can lift Barbara, Tyler, Gwen, Patrick, Francisca, and Sergio in prayer. We know them, we are close to them, and we will likely have an opportunity to actually help them in some way. We ask that you be with us as we give service to them or anyone with our helping hands or thoughtful prayer. Our prayer today for our friends and many others are the words of Rabbi Ramai Shapiro. May those whose lives are gripped in the pain of suffering open even now to the wonder of life. May they let go of the hurt and meet the true self beyond pain, the uncarved block that is our joyous unity with holiness. May they discover through pain and torment the strength to live with grace and humor. May they discover through doubt and anguish the strength to live with dignity and holiness. May they discover through suffering and fear the strength to move forward to healing. In the name of another rabbi and our savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Carol. And at this time now, we will begin our morning worship. Good morning. We welcome all in peace to this celebration of the blessings of community as we endeavor to bring to fulfillment God's purpose for each of us in his kingdom. We'll give thanks to God, call on God's name, proclaim God's deeds among the peoples. We thank you. Sing to God, sing praises, tell of all God's wonderful works. We praise you. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. We, we rejoice, rejoice in your holy praise. presence. Seek our God and God's strength. Seek God's presence continually. We seek to be near you. Remember the wonderful works God has done the miracles performed, and the judgments pronounced. We remember and thank you for all you have done. We shall now join together in singing our hymn of praise, number eight, Praise to the Living God.
Let us pray. Divine Spirit, I praise your name and give thanks for the opportunity to join in community, to sing and praise you. I praise the blessings of diversity in our midst and give thanks for your watching love. Please allow your spirit to flow among us in our many places of gathering. We ask also that your spirit be especially with those standing in physical and spiritual need due to the challenges of this day. Please rest upon our speaker this day that he may bring your words for direction and strength. May our celebration of your presence in our lives be good in your eyes. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. thank everyone for the many uh, ideas they had about what their idea of the kingdom of heaven is. Um, it varied from uh, the nature around us and experiences we have in this life, uh, especially going to church camp. Uh, we can have the kingdom of God here with us now in this time, in this place. Lila shared a, a lovely thought that we have the kingdom of God with us every time the words of all people and God's creation around us are considered equal. Um, today we're going to be uh, listening to Brother Jim as he shares some of the parables of Jesus that uh, he used to explain what the kingdom of God is. Uh, some of the symbols he used were pearls and treasure that was buried in a field or uh, yeast uh, or fishing net. So uh, um, as we look at these pictures that we were able to find on the internet of different parts of God's kingdom, think about how each of us can help to uh, promote the experience of God's kingdom here on earth, how we share with each other in this time. Um, this time is particularly challenging, it seems like, because it's so different um, than what we are used to doing. Uh, in the here and now. Um, I hope these uh, bring peace to you as we prepare uh, for um, the coming sharing of the word. And as we prepare, prepare also for the prayer for peace uh, that Cynthia and Roger are going to be bringing to us next. There are many in our world, in our country, in our communities, and even in our homes that need the peace that only you can bring. We know that your spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Teach us how to pray for others. Search our hearts. Help us in our weakness to be your hands and feet in an aching world. 
we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? You did not even withhold your own son, but gave him up for all of us. Who could ever separate us from the love of Christ? Not hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. We are assured that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from your love. With this love and support, we can be your kingdom. Amen. And this was adapted from Romans 8, 26 through 39. Let us join together with 388. scripture reading today comes from Matthew 13, 31 through 33, and 44 through 52. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, so it'll sound a little different if you're following along with King James or um, Inspired Version. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrub and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. 
then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the goods into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteousness and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Shall we all join uh, in listening to Brother Jim as he shares his thoughts? Sorry, but, um, I, uh, I'm glad to be here today, a uh, little fumbling with the unmuting, but uh, got here. Uh, if we were meeting in the building, uh, the building you see behind me, uh, if we were meeting in that building, we would have concerns uh, about uh, the rain and some people may or may not be able to attend or, or uh, might uh, find a little more uh, adventure even danger in the in the getting to church uh, so i greet you because it's good to see you here it's good to be with you even though we're not in that classic uh, setting where where we would have to worry about um, things like driving and flooding and and so forth instead uh, we worry about how was your health how are you doing? Um, how are you working through job issues or or lack of job issues and, and and so forth? And so I greet you with a set of concerns uh, for you, love for you that might not be uh, what we typically have had uh, in our hearts. And I'm asking at this time that you also share with. Um, concerns about our brothers and sisters uh, in that same kind of a, of a vein. So um, it's good to see you. Thank you for being here. And uh, everybody drive careful on the way home today, OK? Uh, well, you know what I'm saying. Uh, the theme that we're having today is to understand the kingdom of heaven. Uh, the kingdom of heaven was a a pretty new concept that Jesus shared with his disciples and with the society that he lived in. And the kingdom of heaven uh, needed to be explained so that it could be understood. And now our theme is to understand it. So we need to kind of go back and look at what Jesus was explaining to see how that explanation indeed uh, gives us something that we need to understand. The uh, One of the things I would like to share first uh, is another scripture, and, and uh, this scripture would be from the 10th verse of Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6. And uh, to look at this scripture, the, it, it'll be very short, uh, to look at this scripture I want you to put it into the context of what was going on for, for that day. And uh, let's start with this scripture that is probably one of the most agreeable to every Christian. One of the, probably one of the ones that um, few people would, uh, would hesitate to say and try to mean. So, uh, when we look at this scripture, it comes from when some people got Jesus uh, to sit down and they started to say, uh, teach us how to pray. 
and um, he was known to be mighty and, and, and spiritual. And he was asked to teach us how to pray. And so he did. Since he was the Lord, what they called, they wrote down the prayer that he taught. Uh, what they called was they called it the Lord's Prayer. And in the Lord's Prayer, uh, the very first line is, uh, is a line uh, recognizing God and saying how sacred his name, how sacred God's name is, uh, uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But after that starts looking at the content of the prayer. And the very first praise after we've addressed God it is a statement of surrender to the will of God. And that statement is, your kingdom come, your will be done. Well, it doesn't stop there. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We find it pretty easy to surrender heaven to God. Uh, surrendering heaven to God makes per, make, makes good sense because I, I, I can't um, I, I really can't grasp heaven if you will uh, I know we have stories and we'll talk a little bit about what we uh, what we attribute to heaven but no it's on earth as it is in heaven it is difficult it is really difficult for us to surrender earth. To God. Uh, as soon as somebody comes in hungry, one of the pictures you saw uh, earlier during the focus moment was a row of little baby birds. Little baby birds have no patience. All they want to do is open their mouth and be fed. Mama feed me, mama feed me, daddy feed me, daddy feed me. And, uh, and they're insistent. Well, as soon as we see needy people, we start saying, well, I don't know, I, 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 I've got to save things for my family. Um, um, maybe I can give to somebody who will collect from a bunch of people and, and help some, some of the poor people. Um, but we are asked to surrender earth, our place, our existence, and surrender that to, um, uh, to God. So uh, I'd like to now go into and share some of the things about the uh, scripture story we had today, uh, keeping in mind that we pray for this kingdom of God. We pray for this every time we do the Lord's Prayer, and it's probably one of the most uh, universally repeated prayers. <clears throat> in our denomination, we have long used the word Zion as uh, as a short name, uh, meaningfully, not, we're not, it's, it's not like a nickname, but as a shorter name uh, than to say the kingdom of God or kingdom of God on earth. And the kingdom of God, when I say that, I'll mean what it says in the Bible. And when I say Zion, I still mean what it says in the Bible. I'm just using the, the shorthand that our denomination has used forever. If you're more comfortable thinking of this as the kingdom of God, every anytime I say Zion, just think, okay, the kingdom of God. When I was young, oldsters would speak uh, longingly, and oh, the, uh, sometimes tears would come to their eyes because of the passion they felt when they were speaking, uh, and they would speak about the temple and Zion. Those were two of the things that, uh, that happened all the time. And they would say things like telling us that Zion would come down and, 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 uh, and, and be our safe place. And uh, that we would, uh, Zion would come down and we would flee to it. Uh, it. It was a refuge and the concept that was often uh, uh, important implied was that Zion was a place where good people could be safe and it would exclude bad people. And so uh, we would say Zion will keep us safe and keep the bad guys out. Uh, and when we said we flee to Zion, we literally would 
would be told that we would flee for our lives. Uh, I lived in Sacramento, California, and that's roughly 1,800 miles from uh, Independence. And we just believed, uh, when I was a child, we just believed that things were going to go so haywire, so fast, we were going to have to gas up the car, throw everybody in, I hope, hope we didn't forget any of the brothers and sisters, throw everybody into the car and flee design and get there just in time to be safe. Um, that was the picture that uh, I was given about Zion and the kingdom of God. Uh, later, we started uh, using zip codes. And when we had zip codes, well, everybody knew what their zip code was. Uh, but we started to figure out, oh, wait a minute. Now we can actually look and say, I know the zip code for Zion. And so we started saying that Zion's zip code would be uh, 64050. And um, it's taken Lila years to teach me that uh, because she lived in 64050. Uh, but uh, that zip code was the safe place. Jackson County, Missouri was the safe zone. And, uh, and I worried because my zip code was 95822. Oh, that's not even close to 64050. Um, so I had new technology uh, ways of putting uh, my fears in, into place. Uh, I kind of worried um, about that, but uh, I now have begun to understand that my thinking of Zion in that way was probably way too provincial. I probably was um, oversimplifying what I understood about Zion. So that's why understanding the kingdom of heaven is, is important for us. I started to understand that Zion wasn't only a zip code, but Zion was a way of life. And where those birds were lined up wanting to be fed, they would be fed. They will be fed. They will be fed because it's the actual nature of God's message to us that he created all creation for it to work, for things to, uh, to uh, blend and, and, and go along uh, in more or less a, a smooth um, manner. So today's scripture is, is talking about that understanding. Uh, it's, it's not just that I should understand, but it's that I need to be able to take something that I can't understand and still draw pictures that I can share with other people, mental and and verbal pictures that I can share with other people to help them understand. And their need for understanding may be different than mine. Uh, what, they, what they require to hear so that they can picture um, the kingdom of God is going to be maybe different than mine. So Jesus was telling these stories, uh, parables, about different aspects of the same thing that we really often can't, uh, can't picture ourselves. So the scripture lesson uh, is a series of parables or vignettes about descriptions. Um, nowhere in here will it be saying things like 64050. That's not, that's not the uh, thing that we're uh, looking at. But uh, let's look at that first one uh, where we talk about the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Mustard is a condiment, uh, and it's one of my favorite condiments, but it's well known to anyone that attends baseball games or football games, whatever. Um, there are many varieties of mustard, but we usually take the cooking mustard and, uh, and, and make it into a condiment. You squish it, smash it, put it in a little vinegar, and, and pretty soon you have uh, a slurry that is mustard. It's usually yellow, sometimes brown. Um, I like 
I prefer the brown mustard to tell the truth. That spicy mustard, and some people call that ballpark mustard. Um, but that wasn't all of what that little message meant to me. Uh, where I lived in Central Valley of California when I was younger, uh, we would drive many times from city to city. And if we were going north and south, uh, particularly, uh, we would find that we would go by um, irrigation ditches. And in those irrigation ditches were, were plants that had, had this yellow uh, foliage, foliage on it. No, <laughs> never mind. Had this yellow cast around them where they were blooming and stuff. And that I found out, I didn't know at first, but that was wild mustard. And it was an example of, a, 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 if you ever saw a little mustard seed, um, it was an example of what the scriptures say about in that you can let it grow and it will grow as a plant and you can find birds sitting in the plant. The plants might, might get five, six, eight feet tall uh, off to the side of the road. Well, now that changes or that enhances my understanding of mustard and that starts that starts me being able to look and say ah maybe what the mustard seed is saying that the kingdom of heaven or zion is not just something that's there and that you're used to and that you think you've got all wrapped up maybe it's something that will grow and have different shapes and have different purposes and, uh, and different ways of touching into people's lives. Uh, so understanding the meaning of like a mustard seed it is, uh, it has elements of trickiness because uh, a lot of people haven't seen mustard grow and uh, also uh, miraculous. Uh, how, how does something I spread on my hot dog, uh, you know, support birds? Uh, and so anyway, I, I leave that and say, huh, it, it's like something there. Maybe I can help someone see this idea of growing. And you know, one of the things I think is very important is I think that Zion or the kingdom of God is absolutely as available and as meaningful to a kid that's five, six, seven, eight years old or a uh, person that's 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. Uh, or uh, some of us, I don't know whether I'll get there, but some of us may get on beyond 80s into other numbers. And But the kingdom fits and the person fits in the kingdom. So that's part of this growing uh, aspect uh, of the uh, mustard seed story. Um, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. Well, the kingdom is like yeast. Uh, I'm not a big baker as far as baking bread. Uh, I can cook, and I think I'm not a bad cook at all, but when it starts coming into doing things uh, for bread, uh, I'm not a big baker. I'm more of a consumer, or I'm more of a was a consumer, because uh, as my diabetes has uh, uh, given me fits for years, I have to cut down more and more on my um, on my carbs and so I have less and less opportunity for bread but I have done a couple of times uh, done things where I had to put yeast in a flour mixture and see it grow um, I've always loved sourdough uh, sourdough bread uh, sourdough other things uh, there there are people that actually make sourdough cookies and sourdough pancakes and, uh, and, and there's something about things that have been touched by yeast or starter and uh, unleavened bread, it is a thing, but it doesn't taste as good as a, well, it doesn't taste as good, as good to me as a, uh, a loaf of bread where you cut it open, tear it open, and put some butter on it, and dip it in some soup or something like that. Um, it, because the yeast, the starter, the things that go in there to transform the bread, 
from just unleavened bread. That transformation is something that we're looking at explaining or helping somebody to understand the kingdom of God, to be transformed, to be quickened, to be, um, well, to be made um, more, uh, I don't know, more sound in, in terms of what, uh, of what our value to society is, and our social, social value. Uh, and then uh, the kingdom of God is like a treasure. Uh, when somebody seeks for a, a precious uh, object, when they seek that, when they want that, when they go out after it, uh, the treasure, when it's found, has taken on the value of the person's desire. There could be somebody wandering around, uh, stick a stick into the ground and uncover a pearl. That can happen. Uh, but if that person doesn't understand the value of a pearl, if that person doesn't, uh, doesn't even much care, um, that's not a treasure. They may have found something that's valuable and may not know it or, or just not care. So the description of the kingdom as a treasure, part of that is that there is a desire on the behalf of the seeker, the desire to find the valuable. And it, maybe it's things like, I, I want to find a way for my kids to have uh, a, a good education and, and, and have good health and safe safety and things like that. Maybe that's what I treasure. And when I find something like that, that does that, because of my love for my family, my uh, friends and, and loved ones, that uh, when I find something that gives that goodness to them, I call that a treasure. And one of the things that the kingdom of God or Zion would be uh, able to do would be to help things like, like, like uh, uh, good education, just uh, justice and peace, and and some of the other things that that are good, really good that I desire for uh, my loved ones. So I I think the kingdom of God is like a treasure. Finally. The kingdom of heaven is like a net. Now, uh, the planet, our planet has uh, almost 8 billion folks uh, living on it. And it's fair to say that over 90% of these folks have a rougher time of life than you and I. The kingdom of God on earth is a very positive thing to most of the world. Not just the zip code, not just zip code 64050, uh, certainly not for um, uh, places like uh, 95822 or where I used to live or even where I live now, 78023. Uh, it's, it's, the kingdom of God is very positive to people everywhere. It's positive to people in Botswana, uh, New Zealand, uh, Ceylon, Indonesia, or Honduras, the concept of a fair and just society has a lot of attraction to a lot of people. And a lot of people don't have much that even resembles just and fair in their society. So the net of living this way, the, the net to attract and bring people into the Society of Zion uh, is something that can be a worldwide attraction. And the thought of a fair and just community, even one that is distributed around the world, not just in one location, it's very attractive to folks everywhere. And yes, the kingdom of God is like a net that's attractive to many. After he told all these stories, Jesus looked the people 
kind of looked him in the eye and said, recall um, that this whole thing we talked about is trying to help his followers to understand the kingdom of God. And Jesus looked at them and said, have you understood? Did you understand what I've described for you? And they said, yes. Now, these were common, ordinary people. These were people who were peasant class. They were, uh, uh, they're, I'll, I'll almost guarantee you, now the Bible doesn't tell me this, but I'll almost guarantee you, there was nobody in that group that uh, graduated from one of our fine American universities. Uh, you know, think about it, okay? This was for a group of common people. Do you understand? And they said yes, because the stories that he gave were simple. The, the pictures that he drew were simple and common. And they did understand. The criticality of the kingdom of God is, is higher than uh, we sometimes give it um, credit for. Our world is and has been in disarray for a long time and uh, we've actually for many many lifetimes of people we've been operating uh, our society social structures um, as an ongoing disaster we go we go from wars to pestilence to distrust to uh, not getting along back to wars and and we just cycle through in essence, disaster after disaster. And if we would cling to the concepts of Zion, a fair and just society where everybody is concerned and we are concerned for everybody, we would find that then those two rules that Jesus gave us, those two rules that are, are given to us as being very important uh, would have a greater meaning and so we could look at uh, uh, mark 12 31 through 30 through 31 or matthew 22 37 through 39 and we can look at those scriptures and we can say okay my job is to love god with all my heart my mind and strength and love my neighbor as myself those rules can help me put uh, an aura of Zion and Zionic behavior and the kingdom of God into where we live. The community of God's creation that covers all creation, no countries, no counties, no cities, no uh, continents, all creation. I'll, I'll go into the entire universe um, it, that all the body of creation uh, can understand the meaning of living in a literal way of life that is part of an ongoing worldwide, universe-wide uh, expression of Christ's love uh, for us. I'd like to leave you with an invitation. I want to extend an invitation to each of us, each of you, myself too, though. This life is complex. And with obscure solutions to problems that mostly don't relate to anyone's specific training. Oh, if you're a doctor, you have medical training. If you're an engineer, you have engineering training. If you're a, a sociologist, you have soci sociology training. I, you might not have specific training for what you're getting into. And I'm a professional in a very few things but in most things i'm a consumer of other people's expertise in many many more things so my invitation is to think humbly think humbly about this we all have a great deal to learn from the people around us and we have the responsibility to try to be there for them when they need to learn so i invite you to accept the blessings and pleasures of the kingdom of of God on earth. It's already in your midst. Jesus has said that for 2,000 years. And you and we can actually make it real 
and make it real for people who have yet to have heard the message of Jesus or have yet to respond. If you see a space where people suffer, I invite you to help bring them relief. If you see a world where people are unworthy, I invite you to share with them that they are of great value, infinite value. If you feel unworthy or if you suffer, come to your church family for relief. It's our job to be there for you and your job to be there for us, for me. Uh, if you want to help or you need a partner on your path on this journey to the kingdom of God on earth, see Richard, your pastor, or me, or any of the priesthood or leaders, and, and let us help you find and travel your path with you. God bless us all, and God bless all of God's creation. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Let's all join together now in singing hymn 389, This Is My Song. Oh. 
this morning as we think about our disciples generous response i wanted to take a, a moment to thank everyone who shared their ideas of uh non-monetary ways of sharing uh, and, and offering back to the Lord. Uh, Linda shared a beautiful poem uh, about um, and uh, comment about she shared her gifts and talents and time. And that's very important that uh, we remember that uh, our, our generous response doesn't just entail financial aspects, it's our whole being. Uh, part of my job as a medical records director is looking at all the medical records from a person's uh, hospital stay when they come to see us. And uh, one of the things I found myself doing, and it's not probably something I did, it's probably something the Spirit prompted me to do. So I give thanks for that. And I'll catch myself praying for each person as I'm, I'm looking at their record. And in some time, some of them... Um, stay with me and I pray for them for several days because I'm so touched by uh, the challenges that life has brought for them. So, um, you know, as you're out around, I know we're not out around very much, look at, the, look at the people around you, look at their eyes, that's all you can see anymore with the mask on, but you can tell by the eyes, you know, where people are and, you know, offer prayers for them because um, you can see if they're at peace or if they're not sometimes. Anyway, generosity is expressed through the sharing of time, talent, and treasure according to the desires of your heart, not by commandment or constraint. Every time I see that uh, phrase, I remember the sharing about how offering is given in a lot of our African congregations. First off, they walk to church for hours, and then they get there, and then it's time for offering. They all dance to the front, and they put their offering in, and then they dance back around, and then they just they, they dance back up to give offering more than once, and I'm going just with such joy, and uh, that is not by commandment, but by our heart that we give these offerings. With whom is your heart leading you to share? It might be your time. Someone may need to hear a friendly voice. It may be a talent, cooking, fixing, assisting someone with something they need help with. It might be treasure, something that you have that you don't need anymore that they really do need. Take some time to listen to the spirit that just dwells within each of us as it tries to tell you who needs you to share and what they need you to share. When we are intentional in our living generously, we create conditions for the kingdom to be realized here and now. During this time in our service, we strive to bring our purposes more closely in line with God's purposes. Shall we pray over the offerings of our heart? Generous creator, we thank you for the abundance that you have blessed each of us with. Please forgive us for our lack of understanding of your great generosity. Please help us to hear as you teach us about all that each of us have been blessed with and how you desire for those blessings to be used to bless all of your creation. Please bless our current understanding and grow us into greater understanding and willingness to be your hands and feet of blessing. With humble thanks we pray, amen. Our hymn of calling is hymn 387, Bring Forth the Kingdom. Thank you. 
Beloved Father, thank you for this opportunity to join together in thanksgiving and praise. Please allow that spirit you have blessed us with during this service to follow us through the week, so that spirit continues to bring blessings to those we come in contact with. We go forth in anticipation of being blessings in your kingdom. Amen. Our sending forth today comes from the Doctrine and Covenants 163, 3b. Above all else, strive to be faithful to Christ's vision of the peaceable kingdom of God on earth. Courageously challenge cultural, political, and religious trends that are contrary to the reconciling and restoring purposes of God. Pursue peace. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. And uh, at this time, you can uh, unmute your lines if you'd like to stay online and, uh, and chat with everyone. Do you want to come chat, Roger? Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> the cool trio was beautiful this morning. Yes, all the music yes, was. Uh, <laughs> the quartet, Nana. The quartet. Yes, only for one. Me. The quartet. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you, Jim. It was a wonderful service. Wonderful service. It was. It was. Hang on, I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Deanna. Deanna. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Hi, everyone. Uh, Hi there. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you. Good Angelica. to see you all. The music uh, in this broadcast really uh, uh, makes it a very special, um, especially with uh, the girls uh, singing in the background. Uh, that's very special. And But it's all together and uh, I'm able to sing along with them. Uh, and some of the others I go to, uh, it, it's a little bit more difficult, but they're singing really makes the music come out great. Yeah. Good to see you Thank too. You. Thank you. They are very How talented. Thank you, David. Yeah. How are you doing up there? We're doing fine. Yep. Good. Well, actually, I, I, I probably, because you know Sharon, uh, she is having some difficulties and uh, she's she is going in on Tuesday to have a heart catheter. She's a little bit concerned about. She's had some breathing issues. Oh. So that's going to be on Tuesday morning at 6.30. So your prayers would be appreciated. We, we will pray, yes. Absolutely, Dave. Thank you for letting us know. Has it started snowing up there yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's probably going to be hot as hot here as it is down there today. It's supposed to be very hot today. I just looked at the weather. It's actually hotter up there than it is down here. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. We, we have the hurricane just drop some rain on us in the last 24 hours. So. Oh, yes. I, I was wondering about uh, how, it, how it affected you guys. Yeah. A, lot of, <laughs> a lot of wind with it for you? Not really. Not no, much not here in San Antonio. We just get the the stuff that goes off, you know, when those clouds go off and, and meander, we, we yeah. get some of those. So. Uh, okay. Oh, so, wow. 
So we avoided all the damage and got the blessed rain. So that's good. <laughs> that's good, right. <laughs> Carol. Carol, <laughs> <laughs> A little wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple of ages. It looks like snow. It's it snowing is very much snow. And there's a little bit of a waterfall that's frozen. This was a photograph that a friend took uh, for me. And, and, and she, well, I, actually, not for me. She is a semi professional photographer and she takes pictures. And then she puts them on note cards. And she gave me this packet of note cards uh, with all of her original pictures. And this was taken somewhere in Canada. Uh, that's oh, where yeah. she's from, uh, Canada. In the Niagara Falls area, somewhere right around there. That's not Niagara Falls. That's a little bitty. <laughs> but I have this picture out on my desk, propped up. So every time I see that the temperature is 102 or that it's 105 heat index, I look at this snow picture. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Canada, Kathleen and I became great aunt and uncles uh, uh, for a second time yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Our uh, our niece had a had a baby yesterday up in Canada, so uh, we're sharing pictures around the family today, which is exciting. Congratulations! Thank you. We worked really hard, and and we're <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> and what are what are the statistics? Is this a girl or a boy? It's a boy. A boy. His name is Al Alondo Jameson, and he was six uh -huh. pounds three ounces. He had a C-section because he was breech. Oh. And Alondo was Lucas's name before he got adopted. Oh, really? So he's passed it on to his son. Oh, that's yeah, that was nice. His, that yeah. was his birth name. Great. The, the quality of the sound of the strings today was the best I've ever heard. Yeah. Hey, well, that's good. We must, well, must be tweaking something because, you know, when we first started, they were really screechy sounding, but they really sounded very good today. You know, you know why, Lila? Why? Because I tuned them. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, Dad, you definitely did pop our string right before we had to play in front of the family. <laughs> yeah. about the magic touch is definitely you. <laughs> it was nice to hear the quartet, but uh, Miranda, Miranda was bisected. So if you'd all taken a step about to, to, to the left. Yeah, uh, the whole, we could have got the whole quartet in the picture. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. was me. Miranda playing also? Yes, yes. yes. she was yes. Melody. Oh, I had oh, to, uh, my screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I couldn't see her. I thought there, I, I thought there were just the three of them. That's why I said the trio. No, no, they were all playing. I, I forgot to move my my mouse, you know, so that I get the full gamut because I have a limit. You know, I have this huge picture, but I just have a very limited picture. Right, right. And I, I well, at least you had a picture. All I've got is the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> I scooted it over and found uh, found Addison, but I didn't. I just didn't go far enough, I guess, to find Miranda. Miranda, thank you for playing with them. Yeah, of course. I didn't know that, and I'm so pleased to know that. <laughs> it's okay, Nana. You saw that all that you need to see. All the important parts. It's been a good conversation. I will see you all next week, I guess. <laughs> getting, getting the message of the morning, the worth of all people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs>